to give you an idea how fast they're growing. Um, they're planning a $20 billion plus IPO uh, later this year. So what did they do differently? Plenty of people might have had that idea. They executed on it, and they executed to perfection, you know, absolute perfection, super fast, super quick, with plenty of good backing. So what kinds of things um, am I looking for when I consider an investment decision? Well, top of it is team, team, team. It's really important when I meet some uh, group who are coming to me pitching an idea that they have really deep industry knowledge within the team. So for example, AgWorld, which is addressing the agricultural market, there's a guy in there who quite literally started his life as a, um, as a repairer of um, machinery and equipment and worked his way all the way up through the whole corporate space building reputation and getting known in the industry thereafter. Balancing that is a super fantastic CTO who just knows how to cut code like you can't believe and churn stuff out beautifully, really, really nice stuff. So you've got this wonderful balance of um, knowledge of industry and, and tech capability to deliver. Integrity, if anybody does it says anything dodgy in front of me or tells me a little white lie about their history or background and I find out through my diligence process that they have told me a little white lie, it's over. That's it. I'm walking because I do not want to have anybody in my stable who, who starts the relationship with that kind of thing. So integrity is really, really important to me. Um, it's nice to have experience, particularly experience at failing. There's nobody who works harder at succeeding at, at um, their next startup than someone who failed at their last startup, so that's always a good, good basis. And a clear understanding of the VC role. Like, VC has a really, really bad reputation, particularly in Australia. I mean, it's a bit like standing up and saying, you know, I'm a lawyer, and then just waiting until people throw stuff at me. Um, but what a VC can do is bring a strategic perspective, really interesting introductions, give the company a very solid um, foundation in terms of financials, and help it accelerate its development really, really very, very fast. Um, what am I looking in terms of the market that, that people come to pitch to me? It needs to be extremely focused at the beginning. Um, a great example of that is Facebook. Like Facebook started off, it was only available to those who were at Harvard, is that right? Harvard University, and then only to other universities, and then only to North America, and then, oh, look, it's the world. But what they did was they absolutely nailed the product with a very small sample set, and they iterated, and they changed, and they improved it until such time as they were ready to get bigger, ready to get bigger. People who come in to me and say, we're going to, you know, our market's global, everybody's going to want this straight away. I'm like, yeah, but that's not what you're going to build it for. You're going to build it for, you know, left-handed squash players living in Fremantle, and, um, and if you can get 60% of them signing up, then okay, we can maybe go to the rest of the world. Um, so that global upside is really important as well. You want really big markets ultimately from your investment. What about the product? Well, the product is where most entrepreneurs spend all their time, as I mentioned. Um, what I'm interested in is not the entrepreneur's view of the product, but the customer's view of the product. And it doesn't need to be a customer who's signed up and paying. It needs to be a customer who's seen a few screenshots of the product or had it described to them or who can say to me, I have an absolute pain point here and this thing will solve that pain point and almost whatever it costs, I need it. Can you just get the guy to build it and back him? That's the kind of customers that I like to talk to. I'm also particularly interested in products that disrupt a, a, a business or a way that things happen. So um, in, in each case, there's uh, interesting disruption going on on the three tech investments that we've done. With Isotana, they're doing video analytics, which nobody else is doing in the world. We can analyze 50 concurrent video streams to detect anomalies and unusual events. Our closest competitor can do about 10 video streams on one server. Um, with, with Jambox, it's a, an online digital magazine. There's an enormous amount of money spent by advertisers in, in the magazine and print space. It's just not shifting over to the web and particularly to the mobile space. If th those of you out there who have had an iPad, it is a whole new experience. It will just consume your time like you won't believe. iPad is one of the few IT devices out there which when people buy it, they spend in the first week about five hours playing with it. When you ask them the same question six weeks later, they've spent 14 hours playing with it. It grows on you and it grows on you like you can't believe. Um, and lastly, I'm, I'm very interested in technologies that ride a wave of tech change. So in other words, you get this nice double effect where the product is solving a problem for people who have the problem right now, but that problem is also getting bigger. 
So another example of that is Isotana doing video analytics, okay? So there's a lot of installed video cameras out there which just can't be monitored in real time. In the city of London alone, there's more than a million video cameras that are just not being watched. Our software can solve a lot of those issues. But guess what? Video cameras are also being installed and growing at a rate of between 15 and 25% per annum worldwide. So we've got this massive install base that needs the solution, and we've got a growing number on that base to address. So it's a lovely sort of double impact market. I'll keep moving along. Am I behind time? No? Right. It's okay. Right, so I've, I've taken, there's a link on this and I think this is all gonna be shared with everybody, but um, there's a company in Sydney called Polonizer who do a startup boot camp and they have a suggested universal pitch deck and I find this an extremely useful way for, for entrepreneurs to go away and think about how to pitch their idea to um, perhaps initially friends, fools and family and then subsequently to angels and then finally to VCs or maybe just come straight to me and pitch it to the VC. But the questions that people answer are, are laid out here. The problem we're solving is such and such. Our solution is this. There is a big opportunity because our target market is uh, we will acquire customers by doing something or other. We'll make money, which is the bit most people leave out, by doing this. Our key competition, and I, I am, am absolutely, absolutely fixated, fixated on this, if the people can't tell me what their key competition is, and I know competitors in their space which they haven't mentioned in their presentation, out the door, go and do your research again, because it's really, really crucial that you understand all the competitors and not just say, well, we're totally unique because we've got this one extra widget. Um, why are we better than, than the competitor? Okay, mention this, this, uh, this reason for being better, which is the widget, but don't say you've got no competitors. Our team is, again, team, 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 very important. What we'll do next is, and you might have a 100-day plan saying what you're gonna be doing, and what kinds of things, how you're gonna spend the money that, that we put in. Currently, we're seeking partners, people, uh, you know, staff, money, whatever you might be looking for, and to summarize, that's the end of your pitch. So let's go through that as a sample pitch with Groupon. So if Groupon had walked into me two years ago, what would they have said? Hi, the problem we're solving is that customers want deep discounts and companies want guaranteed sales for their marketing spend. All right, so our solution is to provide a platform for companies to only give a discount when the demand is sufficient to justify the sale and for customers to be incented to get friends to sign up so the discount's made available. Okay, cool, I'm getting that. This is a big opportunity because advertising spend is increasingly linked to actual sales. It allows small regional offers and it's cash flow generating from day one. That's always a really nice pitch point. Our target market is highly focused in one city, Chicago, to start with, and then city by city we will develop until we take over the whole world and beyond. So, you know, the space station will have their own little group on offer soon. We will acquire customers by, and get this, I don't have to spend a dollar on marketing. My customers are gonna ask their friends to get on board so that they will get the discount. Hence that absolutely incremental growth, right? You offer somebody 70% off something, but you say, you have gotta find 10 friends for that to happen, they're gonna call nine friends straight away and sort it out. And so, there you are, you've got growth on growth from your customers. We will make money by taking a small percentage of every offer that is completed, and only if it's completed. So from the advertiser's perspective, it's like, no loss situation, I'll put it out there, if, we, if I don't get those kind of sales coming in, they're not gonna take a cent off me, fantastic. Our key competition, well, two years ago, nobody, but now there's about 70 of them doing it in, in the US. Um, Groupon still has an 80% market share, although that's diving quite rapidly at the moment. Um, we're better because we can move faster and deliver on the promise for both companies and customers. And that's what they did about this moving faster, executing, not just having the idea. And our team is, and they had some awesome dudes with a background in fast-moving web businesses. What we'll do next, complete the pilot plan, build, extend to additional markets quickly by hiring a bigger sales force. Groupon is a very sales force oriented business. For those of you who think it's a software business, eh, you're wrong. It's a sales business. It has a huge number of staff who are constantly calling small and medium businesses, drumming up these offices, of, offers, I should say. Currently, they're seeking a few hundred thousand dollars to get started for whatever percent in the company. And to summarize, a highly cash generated business, early test results have been excellent, global scale opportunity, experience and fast moving team, invest. You know, easiest pitch in the world, sure. And now somebody's gonna get $28 billion for the IPO. The question time's at the end. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. I think you're gonna be a very popular person tonight. <laughs>
I look forward to the networking and the big hive of people around you asking you more questions. That was really good.